welcome back to advertising is dead uh we were there yeah you know, i want to start off by saying that when i talk think about writers who have admired in the space in recent many years i mean your name kind of comes up right up there just from the content you made uh and i'm i'm excited for this chat primarily also cuz i want to first start off by asking did you always want to be a writer i think we'll start from there <laughs> yeah i mean um to an extent yes so my dad is a writer uh, my mm. dad's a journalist mm. uh, so i have like pretty much uh, and uh, for some strange reason uh, he used to work from home a lot mm. and uh, use my room all the time so uh, just used to wake up to the keyboard going pat 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 <laughs> throughout all right so that's yeah. my that's the memory i have of my uh, growing up years mm. uh, so automatically i think i used to read a lot as well uh, like because you're a journalist like we used to get about 8 to 10 newspapers at home so always like aware of what was happening around mm. and um, so i i i always wanted to be a writer i think but then i was in denial all right mm. i think that is because i was a bangalorean so yeah. in bangalore what happens is you have to do your engineering Right? Correct. Like you, like otherwise you're a dull student. So <laughs> if you're from the south and you're not focusing on engineering or medicine, then you're a dull student. Um, yeah, completely. Oh, I, I'm, 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 I'm going to talk to you about engineering a little later. Being a uh, person who went through that cycle myself, but we will come to oh, that. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so I think I was in denial because I had to get good marks in PCMB, hmm. and that's what I did. and uh, then yeah then i just sort of gave up on it for a few years and then it was just i think too strong for me to not act on it and it just came back so yeah i always wanted to be a writer i'm guessing yeah yeah and i, I love the fact that you said that you were in denial right? i think that for most writers and and i don't know if it's an indian thing i think it's a general thing is that if you tell someone i want to be a writer even if your family i mean like for you you had uh, your dad who who was a writer but I mean, I came from a family which were half doctors, half engineers. Uh, my parents are pretty cool, uh, so they wouldn't have said no. But the point is, how do you quantify what that means? Um, in my head, I'm like, even now, like if you tell someone, okay, uh, hypothetically, if I turn around and say, okay, I will not do glitch anymore. I want to stop uh, doing this job when I want to be a writer. Everyone's going to be like, dude, are you serious? Like, that's is that a job? Uh, so. How do you? I don't stop making WPP nervous. <laughs> I like the subtle plugs to make WPP nervous, but um, no. But it's it, it's interesting, right? It's like, how do you explain to someone what being a writer means? Yeah, it's a it's a tough one because uh, you know the crazy thing about it, everyone thinks they're a writer, hmm. right? Like everyone because everyone can write. so uh, there's no like special everyone can go hey i'm i'm studying engineering or whatever i am a doctor mm. today but i can also mm. write i can read so yeah. i can read means i can write yeah. so now uh, how do you kind of uh, take a leap from there because when you look at a doctor mm. you know you can't do that so you need a specialist <laughs> yeah, right yeah, when, yeah. when you look at like an engineer like you know in tesla or whatever you know you, you can't do that Yeah. but when you look at a writer everyone goes hey i can also do that yeah. so i think that is the biggest problem to explain a profession where everyone thinks they can do it but they're not doing it yeah so yeah i'll come to engineering later but yeah. so when you started off you started off with advertising largely yeah. right um how was that in- initial curve because i all i was very interesting to talk to people who started off in advertising because i didn't i i landed up in it at some point of time um because what it might seem like from the outside and what it is inside are two very different things uh, so how was that initial part of it uh, when you kind of started off and were doing the whole copywriting wave it, it was great actually hmm. uh so uh, this was 2008 hmm. and uh, in 2008 there are only two things you could do as a writer no like you could either become a journalist Mm. Uh, or you could join advertising which yeah. where basically you had a monthly income like these were the only two streams a writer could do back then yeah. um and i i had seen my dad do work and i was like hey i can make the same amount of money by just writing the headline instead of writing the whole article so i was like okay <laughs> let me pick advertising and it seemed easy because i think my dad work and i was like okay this maybe i'm not so cut out i, I i'm i'm not so mad about it to mm. you know to do that for the rest of my life so advertising somehow seemed glamorous okay mm. and uh, so so i just uh, decided okay let me just give it a shot and uh, I, when i got in i think from 2008 to 2000 i think 15 i was in advertising my first uh, phase mm. but i think from 2008 to 2013 mm. was just 
insanely good hmm. all right because as creative people like like everyone else even they didn't they had only two choices journalism or advertising yeah so it's not like today where you know you can become a content creator you can join like a brand you can join yeah. a creator community you can do 100 things if you're a writer right yeah so the best talent ended up in advertising hmm. right in one way or the other like that's why you look at like all the movies also being written are mostly those advertising writers who yeah. were in that old batch of advertising right yeah. all the filmmakers everyone because they didn't have a choice yeah so uh so it was fascinating it was really good it was the competition was great um uh, you know you would uh, every day uh, look up afax you look up campaign india mm. and you'd be like wow okay this writer is cracking this like i've not even met these guys right they're yeah. all in bombay and yeah. i see their name continuously coming up in campaign india with big uh, with with the, with the good campaigns so uh, so it, it was like it it was a bubble for sure mm. but it was a great bubble to be a part of because yeah. the people were talented and um, i think creative people were respected a lot more in agencies in that mm. initial phase mm-hmm. so uh, so it was good it was it was a good time to be a copywriter in that phase that's an interesting point right is that and and maybe in some ways it it was both simpler yet also quite distinct is that the only the gateway to to writing a film one day the gateway to to building something on on the writing side uh, always started off by working in an agency because you had a portfolio to show and you also had monthly income to show in that sense of the word yeah. which is what i i still feel a lot of people look at a writing job as right you want to build that you know list of things where uh, and the online space almost has changed that like i know for a fact that i started writing a newsletter because i wanted to figure out if i can actually write um mm-hmm. i have started to enjoy it more and that's a, i mean, i would not have had that option that right? i couldn't have just had something i sent to unless i was doing pen pal or something like that which is yeah. for people uh, right now for the audience of this podcast <laughs> if you do, don't know what a pen pal is I, you are way too young you should i i think you should start by explain what a pen is <laughs> <laughs> and then we go to pen pal <laughs> oh. but i found that concept of pen pal so interesting right is the fact that you would randomly write letters to people you had never met and they would write you back letters and just the concept of it seemed so bizarre in today's time but it was it was very interesting when it when it was a thing yeah it was, uh, a, it was a crazy time before tech yeah so i can getting back to before i start digressing towards pen pals uh so at that point you settled 2013 and and at some point and I, and i remember reading about um you joining ab um, you know kind of almost like not joining like being part of ab as as the head writer and and this whole i think there was something i remember reading about you saying there's a certain amount of saying okay advertising was supposed to be anything for a writer and at some point there was some level of disillusionment about it and stuff which is where this came as an opportunity w- what was that uh, phase about because i feel that that's that's an important thing to look at because writers today do feel a bunch of stuff um about writing for advertising so what was that point for you uh you mean the point where i realized i didn't want to do it anymore yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. take the shift yeah i think um I, I, i you know i just felt like when i look back right and i think about it i just felt i was having a lot more fun mm. writing facebook status updates and tweets and getting likes on them mm. than writing a headline or a film or you know mm. one of those cracking those everyday briefs and advertising yeah right and you know you're you've done 7 years in the business by then so you know the hacks you yeah. know you are on autopilot mm. you know if a brief lands on your desk you know how to tackle it it's not that first day wonder anymore right yeah, yeah. it's not like you're discovering yourself as a writer yeah so i just realized that there was no like when a brief landed on my table it wasn't like oh my god let's do something revolutionary in fact it was like let's get this out of the way and let's like consume facebook let's i'm back then there was no nothing else so there was facebook yeah. and twitter let's tweet let's put up some funny update let's read what's happening uh, and then like uh, give it a spin mm. I, I, i didn't know it back then but it was like i was just the validation game yeah. i had entered yeah. and that was giving me a bigger kick than like <laughs> writing a headline or cracking a film in advertising and also the process in advertising was just bogging me down right like mm. you think of something then you go to your boss then maybe he has a point of view you don't agree on but you have to you know accommodate it 
then you go to his boss or mm. her boss mm. and then you kind of sit with them and then they might have three four points of view on like a small 30 second or film and then like you go to their boss mm. all right and then there's this whole strategy team that gets involved uh, you know sometimes mm. before sometimes later then you take a bunch of these to the client mm. and then the client gets involved either you know it's out in the first round and then you're back to square one or like yeah. they have a bunch of points of view and then you accommodate all that and then eventually it goes to a filmmaker and then it depends on the budget the kind of filmmaker you get and then the piece of work comes out and then somewhere you're like this is not what i initially wrote in the like, first imagined. place right <laughs> and then they're like how much ownership do i take of this <laughs> as opposed to going on the internet like say facebook like i have a thought i put it out it's done right like yeah. I, it, yeah. it's over like you know there's no interference there is um, there are no like red tapeism in mm. like the digital content at least like just by putting up a facebook update right so i think all these factors like in my mind start playing with me where i'm like are this it became a regular job mm. which i dreaded right like that's mm. the reason why i took it up and i was like kind of looking for a way out uh my way out was okay i'm just going to i moved to bombay it was two years it wasn't mm. working out and i was like okay let me just go back to bangalore and just you know figure things there yeah um and then somewhere i think <laughs> to my luck mm. i think aib was looking for writers and that happened yeah you know, what you said is so interesting right is that um the process you spoke of almost feels like that game we used to play as kids which was apple where you would say something in someone's ear and they had to yeah. say what you said in their next person's ear <laughs> and yeah. by the time it reaches the last person it's not necessarily what you started off with at all uh, exactly and if if and and i'm going to fast forward a little bit and i want to come to the 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 two cred campaigns right is that mm-hmm. when you worked on these is that the gap that was kind of like changed here is that is, was that what made a difference because it has had a bit of i would say cultural impact in terms of the fact that people are looking forward to say, okay who is going to be the next uh, character what's going to be the next thing it's always a bit of a surprise there are many mm. pieces that i felt were very youtubeish in the way you guys structured uh, all the film so but did it take away the, taking away this entire chain was that all almost one of the core secret sources there i'm i'm assuming it was right mm. because uh, we just had like a dream client uh, mm. who there's no interference literally right like this blind trust Mm. um and um the team which is basically me tanmay puneet nupur and for the second uh, for the most recent on vishal also joined us like mm. four five of us i think i was the one with maximum advertising package yeah. all right like these guys i don't even i don't think tanmay has ever worked <laughs> like in advertising no. before like uh, in an ad agency the typical can i tell you something about tanmay and he will kill me uh, for telling this story on a podcast um uh, is that years ago um i did a, a, a reality show for mtv called on the job and okay. that was basically putting people in a job situation for 48 hours my advertising oh. episode the contestants were one two contestants on part of one team who were competing to win were tanmay bhat and varun thakur <laughs> Oh wow. I have is to find on, that episode on YouTube. <laughs> I have to find it. They, they were trying to sell up up uh, I think they had to sell mentors or they had to sell some mint okay. right and they had to come with an ad and they both lost. They were both in the same team and they lost the other team That's one. So I have sad. to find that episode. <laughs> That'll be funny. So I think But Tanmay's yeah, only so I, I only, that, only background in advertising exactly. for that. Exactly. That is that has been Tanmay's only baggage back baggage from advertising. Yeah. and lupur had a little bit like you know 2 3 years mm. of experience uh, but i was the most bogged down like you know that like 2008 to 2015 like that's 7 mm. years yeah. and uh, so i think that i think subconsciously comes across right it's like mm. the, when you're creating it's where you come from that matters the most so yeah. these like the team essentially doesn't even like i think for uh, most of them it was the first time they're writing a tvc also like and you know in that side like it's not like a hallowed thing to write mm. a tvc yeah. because yeah. i remember in advertising that was your holy grail right yeah. every year you work hard you hope at least one film comes out yeah right yeah. Yeah. and uh, so i think there was like i won't say less respect given to it but mm. you don't know you don't know the game you're playing but you're yeah. just good at it right like and you're coming from a completely different um, you're not uh, enamored uh, by it you 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 you, exactly. you want to do great work but you're not really like, oh my god holy yeah, grail is not happening because happen- you yeah it's not your dream right to put mm. like a tvc on air like i don't think anyone in the team it was it their dream to put like a tvc on air so um, so i think uh, i i'm guessing that really was like i feel what worked because mm. we had like a team which was very fresh like not done so much advertising and i had forgotten advertising and then you had like 
I think it's a client. Like people, whenever I mean they credit us for it, I just genuinely feel that you know the client needs to be credited on mm. these campaigns way more than the creative team. Yeah. Simply because it's just like I I genuinely haven't worked in a place where there's so much trust, right? To the point mm. that sometimes it's scary because the ownership was is completely on you. You have no excuse after it gets screwed up to blame anyone. You can't say yeah. strategy. You can't say client. You can't say anyone. It's all on you, right? And of course we had Ayappa. like yeah. you know like uh, the best Ooh, legend of all so, kinds yeah exactly so uh, so it was a complete team effort and i feel it was also only possible because the client was great yeah what i feel is also interesting about this, the, the the model that right? and, and and i find the model the most interesting is that many reasons if you talk to someone in advertising about why these things exist is okay no we need to keep in mind the long term brand strategy you know what are the core you know brand brand aspects you know all those things are check off so that it doesn't feel like it's alien to the brand uh, and all those checks and balances many ways what do you said checks and balances also exist so that it's not a okay it's one person's fault if it doesn't work everybody has had their own part to play in it uh, and there are obviously people there will be one set of people who say that's really important to have because from a long term perspective that's what brands need the other side in many ways we'll say what you guys did shows the fact that because how people consume content today is so built on youtube instagram etc that doesn't necessarily apply for everything it might apply for a few things but for most things it might not um where do you think the the i'd say where do you think the balance lies in it is the way you see it uh i i think the whole long term strategy thing right mm. i feel doesn't shouldn't exist anymore all right and here is my reasoning to it is that uh, how will you plan for long term when things you don't know like will it's like user behavior is getting invented hmm. right like yeah. every yeah. two years it's yeah. not changing it's yeah. not evolving it's getting invented yeah. right now how can you plan like you know how can you have a plan for 3 years from now and when you are at that cusp of 3 years Hmm. how can you hold yourself back because saying that hey 3 years ago like this is the vision of the brand yeah. or this is the long term strategy of the brand yeah. and just hold yourself to those tenets when those that user behavior doesn't exist anymore right hmm. like if you look at it like this is the crazy thing i was discussing this with someone the other day um you know in 2000 ha huh, when my facebook memories come up right mm. like uh, i still go to facebook you know just to feel nostalgic yeah yeah so uh, this is me too. once in a while i'm like oh it's still it's still there yeah. like, that app is yeah. still somewhere on my phone yeah yeah and i see like my uh, when i go to memories i'm like shit i was putting up so many status updates here every mm. like day and the kind of writing mm. for facebook was so different all right mm. to the writing that i maybe now do on instagram like you know like for like an insta post to go viral like yeah. i'm kind of obsessed with numbers and virality even for mm. my personal page right if i'm putting out something yeah. if it doesn't get likes i will be like i will be just thinking about it i'll go delete it even I if i totally know post. what you're talking about i look at that that prof- professional dashboard or that dashboard so often it's not even funny yeah so i just feel that uh, so now fuck facebook doesn't exist like <laughs> can you believe it 2018 i was like trying to get likes on facebook trying yeah. to go like write posts on facebook go viral yeah. like i remember airbs so, like you know pages would get 50000 likes and all that the airb social media team was like so into facebook and twitter yeah and then 2021 that that facebook only doesn't exist yeah. and facebook is a company like and i say facebook i'm not talking about the like the yeah, overall yeah, the platform i'm yeah. talking about the platform yeah was the platform that ushered in the whole it changed the world right it yeah. changed the yeah. world it changed the way we consume content for it changed the way we live hmm. and that company that brand is gone irrelevant yeah. right almost yeah. it's like, only you, know, you only go there to check whose birthday is when yeah um, and you also that's because you feel bad about it when you share something on instagram you you give you that thing and you want to share on facebook too and you do yeah, that right. also in you know, most like cases like might as well like you might know, as let as it well, just yeah. go there some yeah. likes will come yeah. so let it yeah. just go there yeah so i mean that is shocking like in 10 years ago like you know this platform that ushered in this whole thing is not relevant anymore for our audience yeah. so how will you do like long term planning like how will you how can you even plan for and this was still 2018 it was still killing it like yeah. you know yeah. i remember yeah. looking at my memories i'm still doing it so how can you plan for 2022 like you know yeah. because now we've had three we've had four years of instagram right where instagram yeah. is there 
Yeah. And how do we know in 2022 or 2023, like the whole short video platforms are going to take over, mm. right? Like you know, a Maj or a Takatak or like a Chingari yeah. uh, or, or like a Roposo, where yeah. like the user behavior is completely different. Yeah. Right. It's just fully different. Like, how can you plan for 2022, and mm. how can you take decisions or your marketing or your brand decisions from 2022? For like 2024, and how can yeah. you hold yourself accountable in 2024, saying that no, our long-term planning said this, so this is what mm. we have to do. So I just feel that uh, it's a very difficult time, like to be a brand manager. Also, like mm. I kind yeah. of empathize with them. Yeah, it's like a very difficult time to be that because there are these bunch of concepts that we've learned and like, and I see how that worked in 2008 to 2015 when social media and all was not big in advertising. Yeah, when yeah. you needed that long term, like every year, like a bingo has to do something crazy on mm. TV. Like yeah, you know, yeah. their personality is something, right? Like yeah. you needed to do that. But now it just like, like you know, emotional. If if sentimental things don't do well, mm. like how can you continue doing sentimental content? on a platform that doesn't respect that particular emotion yeah and and i also feel that that strategy part is in many ways not necessarily about the content anymore it's about okay how do you kind of how does your brand look visually how do you kind of connect to your consumer how do you make them buy stuff i feel yeah. this part still stays true there but i agree with you entirely yeah. on the content side it's flipped a lot more in terms of what are people going to consume me for they won't necessarily consume my content because of i'm sticking to my brand ideology more than i'm sticking to what they want to consume it used to be the other way around right in many yeah. ways yeah that's very true yeah i think that's a very nice way of putting it also like it's flipped fully yeah. like you know so uh, i think that is like yeah. was this also a bunch of unlearning you had to do in the uh, at, at the point when you shifted from advertising to aib and when you started writing the stuff the amount of uh, what were the things so, you unlearned quickly i don't think i wrote anything uh uh for the first 8 months mm. at aib because uh a first like 4 months was just like oh my god like have <laughs> i made like a mistake <laughs> like, uh. i'm just not i'm not able to contribute right yeah. you know, that crippling thing where you're yeah. working hard but you yeah. can't contribute because you realize like you're fully wired in a different way you're waiting for a brief and then there's this whole like box you put yourself into which is also right one of the right ways of doing advertising right like mm. you have your brief you have like your tg i mean that that's what has been drilled into me for 7 years then yeah. and then i come to this place and it's just like like you know four five people just discussing ideas uh and virality and mm. like uh, you know like uh, you know what things are going viral and then writing films for it or writing sketches for it uh, none of those rules hold true and there are these new skill sets you need to learn uh, skills you need to learn um it was the first few months like i don't think i have anything on the air youtube channel for the first 7 8 months nothing mm. it was just like just watching these four or five people do their magic just learning 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 unlearning and then slowly you know i i'm now looking back maybe like 2016 i think is when i started like genuinely contributing and then 2017 2018 like then it just like gets better but the first few months were very difficult and very lot of unlearning so when you look at um, what it requires to be a writer today mm-hmm. and because you've been on the curve on on both these ends of things how uh, what have you can if you had kind of put on some these are core pieces you need to keep in mind to be a writer who can be always multi dimensional right you might be writing mm-hmm. for a brand today you might be doing it for your own personal thing the next day um uh, might be creating something for a platform uh what are the core skill sets uh, the way you see it it's a like honestly something that even i have been trying to answer this for myself right mm. because mm. i feel that okay i i genuinely feel that our wave is done now right mm. and now like you 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 are not doing those 8 10 minute videos anymore right mm. you are not doing those like the whole user behavior has changed right on the internet like people yeah. follow people people don't follow collectives people don't yeah. follow entities um because like people want to see real things vlogs mm. do well because mm. their own lives like you know we are so into the internet that we forgotten to make real connections in real life but we look yeah. for real connections in uh, creators right like how that is, is so uh, Tan- true. <laughs> how is tanmay's friends doing how uh, yeah. how does tanmay react to like if one friend gets covid like what is his reaction what is 
prajakta doing what is yeah. like ranveer doing right like yeah. uh, so you are looking for real personalities on the internet so the whole like how do you write these videos right now if i was still in the youtube game now how mm. do what is like where where do i stand like yeah. how do i write these videos like yeah. this is a completely different skill set now imagine the next level like you know you look up moj or you look mm. up takatak the content that's going how do you write chicken leg piece Right, yeah, like you can't. How yeah. do you like you? How do you? You, you can't even imagine it. it, right? Like for anyone who like chicken leg pieces by far, and this has been something which I've been hearing of for so long, and it it still stays, right? It still stays because it's so unique in its bizarreness. Yeah, like you can't. I can't think yeah. of another thing that compares to chicken leg piece. Yeah. So for people who don't know, how do we explain what chicken leg piece is? <laughs> <laughs> please, please just Google chicken leg piece <laughs> and uh, P I S, not P I E C. Just yeah. like try variations of spellings you'll like. Basically, a guy who eats chicken every video and says chicken leg piece. That is literally yeah. the video. Yeah, that's all it and is. And he gets like fully viral. Like he has a manager <laughs> and everything now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he has chicken sponsors and and everything else at some yeah, point lined up. Hundred percent. So. Yeah, you can't write for these things, right? Like yeah. so, as an evolution, like so, even I ask myself, like, what do I do now? Like, you know, where where do I go? So, like, to come back to your question, I just feel that the only thing that mm. I tell myself is to make sure that consume everything mm. and internalize the consumption, right? Mm. Like, mm. make it part of your subconscious. So, in your thinking, somewhere mm. it's your experiences what come out, right? So, yeah. consume more every day. consume mm. takata every day mm. consume insta stories every day consume youtube shorts every day consume vlogs every day right like um um so hopefully like you know just that consumption pattern that you internalize that goes into your subconscious and then when you're thinking of ideas for that medium maybe interesting things will get thrown up i feel that is the only thing but otherwise very difficult to answer that and very difficult also to you know keep adapting yourself to these new formats you know you mentioned something a little while earlier right is the fact that that automatic transition for someone who's to start off in advertising as a writer then transition to writing films etc in many ways i feel that's what's happening with i I'd, i'd call your generation of writers saying you're transitioning from um you know you have from uh, obviously you started in advertising but a lot of you all started off writing for uh, stuff on youtube and now transitioning yeah. to writing for streaming platforms um writing for those cause at some point i feel that's almost a it's become a natural progression that you move from one category of 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 content platforms to the other so uh to again move towards that part of it uh do some of the st- things that work well for youtube content uh in especially in the sketch side etc do those play well now as you as, uh, when you move towards stuff which is on streaming platforms is, is that almost Are there lots of legs there that you can pull from? I don't know why I said legs, but uh, points from here you can pull to that. Ah, uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, because, like, say, comedy writing somewhere like mm. is almost the like you can say the you're going for the same feeling, mm. right? You're going for like laugh. You're going for the laugh. You're going for the reaction. You're going for the provocation. Yeah. Uh, you're going for the surprise, right? Yeah. So uh, there are some things that will like you look at even right from Monty Python. Till like today, and I'm sure tomorrow will always get you laugh. Some hacks, like you know, like exaggerating, yeah. right? Or like uh, uh, you know, just flipping, like you know, set up, set up, and you flip, right? Mm. Like those basics will always be there. Yeah. And um, uh, so I think while writing sketches, um, uh, I think one of the things that, like you know, f- that kind of make uh, uh, that that you really pick up is to take a trope. Mm. and then flip a trope right like mm. uh, if it's a game show or mm. right you take game show put it with politics like and mm. then you mix this and then you play it out like a game show so mm. all the tropes of a game show you take but so i think somewhere we become a little good at that mm. right like uh, taking tropes of um, like identifying um, moments uh, in a particular situation and mm. then flipping it around and making fun of it Mm. is what like you become good at and i think mm. that as a skill set is will always be hand like you know even yeah. if i'm writing like say if you're writing a comedy film or even if you're writing a thriller to an extent yeah. like those rules will still work to keep the audience hooked to keep the audience surprised to give to make sure you sort of plant and make sure they don't see it coming yeah so those things are definitely helpful 
and do you feel that at some point we we've reached a level because a how i like you said it's gone to personal now from collectives but yeah. do you feel at some point we we've reached that point where writing has become one of the core skills, skill sets that you require to create really engaging content especially on broader platforms like because before otts came in let's be honest mm. uh, writing was not necessarily the primary focus area if you had to make a film or a tv series right you were a like i have seen tv show sets where the the, the next di- set of dialogues in the next shot come on whatsapp like 2 minutes before that right i have seen those things happen if you go to daily soap daily soap <laughs> yeah um, i have friends who write <laughs> scripts have been amazing right you just like what well, are next scene ka dialogue nahi aaya and that comes on whatsapp and you see that yeah. and you go and you act, they act it out hence why the the number of uh, uh, i'd say effects are put in because you technically are writing a 10 minute script and trying to extend it to a 20 minute episode so yeah. um yeah. and you going from there to now when you're really talking about writing being the core of it right like every single series that does well in recent times even t- more than direction and more than anything else people talk about the writing a lot more so i think it's also come at an interesting time for the transition of writers to for creating on on almost democratized platforms like youtube to moving to this where at a point when writing is truly valued especially in that space do you, do you think that's where we are at now i see i think uh, definitely writing is valued mm. all right there mm. is more respect for writers mm. um there is a decent amount of money for writers mm. uh that has definitely changed and um there are a few reasons for that uh one of which is that um you are on a platform mm. that has mind hunter mm. that has like you know you know what you're saying <laughs> yeah, right like yeah, you're on yeah. a platform you have to compete with that yeah yeah you have to compete with that and your audience has watched that and then mm. they're watching your <laughs> your yeah. show or yeah. shit that you're trying to create yeah so the it you are so horribly exposed mm. right like imagine you go from uh, like whatever you go from american playboy uh, mm. like the way they attack a biopic Yeah. to like a biopic that you make yeah. and then like you just see the like the difference is just there right like yeah. so you have to like i'm sure the platforms also make sure that you know there's a quality whatever big quality filter which yeah. didn't exist earlier yeah. and there is a feedback loop right like you immediately get feedback you immediately get watch time right you immediately get like when this person skipped you imme- like there is there's no escaping failure now right yeah. you can't yeah. blame on anything so now the content has to be good Yeah. uh and also uh social media has helped uh because writers are more articulate mm. all right so like mm. they game twitter well mm. uh they game instagram well with their writing so yeah. they build a following over there as well so uh so they become a little more known in the smarter circles mm. who is like who are kind of bank rolling these shows yeah. so uh so it it's easier for a writer to get a little popular these days thanks mm. to twitter and facebook and i mean forget facebook thanks to twitter instagram places where you can write and put your points of view and go viral mm. and build a following for yourself but do you to some people what they might actually even turn around and say is that okay, television also had that but mm. there is something about streaming that i feel has fundamentally changed and streaming across the border as a phenomenon it's just changed the way we consume and what we want to consume and and yeah and while you might be someone who doesn't even watch a uh, an globe or international show mm. some of the expectation of what you will get has kind of changed uh, in the consumer do you, do you feel that's it. also a fact yeah because it's the difference between broadcasting and like choosing right like earlier tv was broadcasting like you mm. didn't have a choice <laughs> whatever yeah. was served on you you yeah. had to take it you couldn't like be like hey wait let me just go watch something else and come back there was no choice like you switched on tv and it just like beamed stuff at you and you have to be okay with it or not okay with it so something that's remotely okay you just like tell ha this is good because it's yeah. remotely better than the garbage so you're like yeah. okay this is good but yeah. now that is not the case you click what you want mm. like you pick what you want so i think that has what like i think that's the fundamental difference for me between tv and ott yeah and as someone who started off his career in tv i must tell you that there are many things which i'm very happy that i like it's almost like you know when i hear people saying there are two kinds of people who say i miss advertising and how it used to be and oh. how it's become now the same way oh. people i miss how television used to be and how oh, it is wow. now and i'm like i definitely don't miss how television used to be like i zero missing uh, that part of it yeah. um, 
my big worry is ott shouldn't become like how television used to be uh, is my only worry at some point which i mean there is yeah. a category which feels that way but um, and that's also a thing right is that we suddenly realized there was this gaping hole of lack of writing when suddenly you, the requirement was quality content and then suddenly now this everybody wants to be writer say okay i want to be a writer but i want to make it sustainable for me i want to make sure that you know that monthly income piece you spoke about that's that keeps coming back in um how do i make sure i still make a consistent amount of money while i still want to write um what do you think the avenues are today so because a large part of the, this audience is going to people who want to start up their careers right uh, who want to make that shift um and and at the and at the risk of uh, scaring wp twice some people might be having a midlife crisis and saying do i always want to be a writer for life um and uh, and and so what are the opportunities there to just make sure that at some point there is a sustainable amount of money coming in for you and yet you can kind of almost like live the dream of sorts is very 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 difficult uh, around i this is what i feel um, like you know when i look at copywriting right like when i just i mean now that whatever done these campaigns uh, there are a lot of briefs that you know come and um, like i'm like should i just still like get back into it mm. full time what is the scene um there is no ip right there is i'm sorry about that yeah but there is no uh, uh, i think the biggest problem uh, with a uh, with advertising writing is and writing in general is for writers is mm. like it's a rat race like mm. the minute you stop there's no earning mm. right but for everyone else all right like if you are um, if you have skin in the game mm. uh, then you will make a lot of money you make disproportionate returns right yeah. and for a writer that is not that is not going to happen like if you are like say a copywriter and you're working on this account and your idea is going to blow that company up all right mm. is going to drive downloads through the roof mm. but you don't have any skin in the game you are still yeah. at 70000 rupees a month okay yeah. maximum you will get a lakh a month after that campaign goes out mm. now how do you survive all right like say in the past what would happen is that when say between like say 1995 and you take to 2010 all right nothing much changed mm. all right like it was tvc radio print outdoor it mostly remained tvc radio print outdoor now um, I, only thing that changed is maybe the way the films were made like the craft of film making the craft of print the craft yeah. of photography those things kind of changed so if you retired in 19 if you retired in 2000 mm. all right mm. as a writer or as someone in advertising you retire you could be a advisor you could mm. be a consultant you could not you don't have to work 20 hours a day you could just work like 6 hours a day across two three places and make a lot of money but now that also is in danger because mm. if i retire today and two years later three years later the whole medium has changed of writing yeah. all yeah. right like how will i be like a consultant with a little equity deal in a company what advice will i give them on how mm. to game like a new platform when my claim to fame was gaming youtube which may yeah. not even exist then yeah. right yeah. Yeah. so at the end of it like that has fundamentally changed like you can't mm. even take on advisory roles to chill out and like you know where your expertise is so uh, in demand and your expertise is uh, valued so much that someone's going to give you equity in the company yeah right like you can't retire as an ncd and tomorrow go to a startup and say hey give me 10% of your company i'm going to be with you for the next 10 years that person is going to turn around and say what will you do for the next 10 years yeah. right like in 3 years you'll go to be irrelevant so why will i part with my 10% to you right? yeah yeah and so then there is no like disproportionate gains for the yeah. for the amount of ideation the craft you're bringing in right so that for me is like the biggest challenge to solve mm. so um either you know you uh, and even as ad agencies right like mm. even as communication agencies if you don't we don't own the ip to anything we do correct right so what is the value that we have at the end of it if we want to sell right we're mm. just like selling hr at the end of it correct so yeah, you um, you are a people business and you are uh, you are a relationship you're a and people business. business yeah yeah and like you are not going to be valued at a big rate because if the key people quit then it's going to be a headache for the person who's acquired you right yeah. so now how how do you make money in this whole thing where 
uh where you the only thing is you have to keep working to keep making money which is unfair right like yeah. you have to have a short and disproportionate income uh, yeah. uh and so that you can retire and then when i say retire you you're more independent you'll be like okay let me pick and choose you're autonomous so right you don't necessarily have to stick account. to that 9 to 5 to do or it's never 9 to 5 but you don't have to stick to that but yeah yeah you can yeah. do things at your own pace you you can do other kinds of writing you can give other kinds of writing a shot you can take risks in life yeah. now i think that has become like the biggest issue so like somewhere i feel that how do you own that piece of land like you know like maybe you join like you know in marketing positions in early stage startups um and like i don't know it's, it's still like a question that i haven't been able to answer so to come back to the question about how to make like money as a writer you can make money all right you can you can make your monthly money and then you are going to peak at like say 35 36 and then there will be like a new batch of writers with new styles for new formats or new platforms coming through and then when you are going to you are going to be fighting for work with them yeah and eventually then you will start getting priced out on the market and then you then what do you do right like that's yeah. where it makes me existential like what do i do yeah. after that which is why it's it's interesting that at some point maybe that collective concept which used to be um for let's say a channel is now almost a collective thing you are grooming the next set of i don't know i'm just i'm this is now going to become a brainstorming conversation but <laughs> how to make uh, money in how to make money as writers this is literally what we're doing now uh, because at some point you are almost grooming the next set of people um so like like what transition you kind of made with all things smaller you almost moving towards an entrepreneurial angle and that's the only way as a writer you can still kind of build long term value yet almost groom the next set of pieces and, and all that stuff there yeah i think um, that is like one way of doing it but even the, even that right like unless you have a product right like unless yeah. so basic thing is like i stopped working mm. but my work is still working right yeah. like that like that will never happen like you know uh it's that consistency want... game right what in, what social media has done is that you know the word they say you want to be successful on online you need to be consistent yeah i was watching a video uh, of an author which who i read a lot of books of uh, guy called Ryan Holiday who writes about stoicism mm-hmm. he says that he just released his he says how he writes every day he writes about 100 to 200 words every day and so by the time one book gets published he has already finished writing the next book and he's starting to work on the next one so at no point is his writing done so he's written 11 books and he's like that's my cycle every day i know i need to write 200 words so mm-hmm. the rest of the day i i can just do emails and calls and chill the rest of the day i have to do whatever i want to do but i know i will write 200 words a day and he said that's the maximum of autonomy i can get to the only way i can be autonomous if i find one thing i can be consistent with for life baki sab will be like i can mm-hmm. still go out and like he lives in a farm now so he's like and go feed the goats or whatever like i think, I think yeah I think th- that's the thing right it's like you stop writing then you stop making like uh. <laughs> so i think that is like a big issue um, I, i don't know how like you know uh, it can be solved maybe like some ways where writers demand more than just like money like you mm. know for like the accounts that they're building or the value that they're creating at a very early stage and uh, they get like a small piece in the pudding for uh, you know just like growing it at least for the initial few years uh, i think something needs to be done but i yeah. genuinely don't know how i actually want to flip a point to and and, and tell me if i'm almost uh, what's it called fishing for something um mm. I asked you for advice if I want to be a writer today. If I'm a brand manager today and I want mm. to kind of almost look at okay, the great mm. campaigns have obviously been fabulous. Have gotten the the amount of buzz they have. Have obviously gotten mm. enough. Uh, the one word I hate the most, which is virality, because that <laughs> seems to that I mean that that uh, I want to make a viral video still gives me nightmares. <laughs> yeah. um, and I want to emulate that, but I also know that I have certain processes I have to follow. um uh, what are the points which anyone can kind of take away from this which which is easy to add on which most people don't i i um i feel like you have to get the right people for the job first you have to be very clear as to what you want like i think that is the most important thing like you can't go to like creators and expect them to do like cool tvcs that are very what an agency can do for you right like yeah, yeah. so uh, 
so i think firstly i think you, you need to be very very clear as to what you want um like you know for example like i know like like netflix or zomato in india like they are very clear like netflix is very clear when they come to you with a brief like you know they most of the times they know what they want and they approach the right person for the job and then they just like let it be mm-hmm. and i think as brand managers i feel that um, i think one is to have clarity as to what you want and then two is to approach the right people for that job uh not get too tied like say to like agencies that you already know about mm. uh, like you know uh, like if you come to me for like a a mod ca- like a, a like a short form like a 8 second video campaign which is right now i'd be the wrong person to do that yeah. right yeah. like you go to someone who's creating in that domain mm. so i think like just open up like uh, like the whole like box that we've all been trained to put ourselves into like you know like we all want to be like he just get me that one person who will do everything for me like yeah. okay you find <laughs> you know you find yeah. what you want me to do like you you are always looking for that one person or that one uh, entity that will do everything for you i think that is gone now mm-hmm. like i think it's like a lot of hard work on the brand managers front where they have to almost be uh, like talent scouts right mm-hmm. like they have to keep looking out for okay this is gaming in this genre and this is the person doing it like this yeah. is doing well in this genre this is the person doing it. and then approach you know that people or approach the agency that specifically does something like that and like get them to do those things yeah. so that i think the era of retainer ship is mm. uh, like fully going to be questioned yeah and uh, there, there is, uh, honestly there is there is it used to be everything is under the agency's gamut now it's like agency yeah. holds a, a, a set of things Yeah. the rest of it is basically basis the job basis the basis the yeah. create to basically what it requires yeah so i think clarity is the most important thing right now and like i mean that's what i think like i might be wrong but yeah, yeah. makes total sense if you ask me uh yeah towards the uh, later for every episode i ask my guests a set of random questions which are always the same um yeah, yeah. i find it fun to ask the same things again and again and find the answer interesting um apart from I can't even call it a day job. Can I call what mm. you do a day job? <laughs> you can call it more of a night job because it's all the work. <laughs> Apart from your night, night job, um, and, and obviously uh, being a dad to a two-year-old, uh, what do you spend a lot of your time doing? What do you, what is your uh, uh, what is that thing that you sp- you you focus on? It could be something you consume, something you do, which uh, people will be like, really, that you have a lot of time to do that as well. It's, it's so sad that you know I. i have a, i have like it's nothing like you know i just watch stuff in my free time uh. and that is more to find out who's doing what mm. like even if i'm unwinding it's like watching content <laughs> then the content is life is, yeah content is like stressful part is creating the uh, uh, other part is unwinding but like i think one thing i truly like enjoy doing is like i like walking mm. uh, so i try and take a few walks like as much as i can uh on my own without company like yeah. i usually uh, you know it's without company and um i love uh um uh, hanging out with interesting people not mm. friends but i just genuinely love meeting friends of friends like um, that's I, called that's, a podcast <laughs> exactly <laughs> why do so this that, that, that's the prime reason why i do this is like get to talk to interesting people you have literally given away my exact point <laughs> so yeah so i just like i mean the only thing that maybe someone might not expect is like i like to walk hmm. no but actually <laughs> walking scared i think walking makes you makes you i'm almost like they call it distract is that um, i don't know what i was listening to the other day where it said that walking without consuming anything sometimes is the best way to get your mind to kind of think because yeah. you're not plugging anything there or like even you're just giving it time to um and you know, a process stuff which might be there at the background somewhere yeah it is sometimes it's scary also right because it's like <laughs> you're like what do you think about and then like you think about some weird things and yeah. then you're like i mean shit i shouldn't be thinking about this but you can't distract yourself yeah, yeah. so it resolves a lot of issues i feel. yeah no no 100% it does um and uh, since you've been consuming a lot of content what have you been consuming in recent times that you would recommend i'm just i don't know how i've been so late into this bandwagon i just start family man all yeah. right Fa- family man season 1 i just yeah. started day before yesterday because i saw a lot of memes That's on family man yeah like i saw a lot of memes uh, on the season 2 
Hmm. And I'm like, oh, okay, maybe this is breaking into pop culture, so I need to watch it. And then I just started watching it. I'm like, I didn't have too much expectation. I'm very sorry to say that, but yeah. I just didn't have like crazy expectations. But oh man, that's so good! Such a great show. No, I'm also hearing that season two is a lot better than season one, and I actually really liked season one. I, mean, I had my issues, um, and, hmm. and considering you just started, I will not tell you. I will no spoilers. <laughs> but i had my issues towards the to some parts of the show but uh, in general like, fabulous writing and and that's also what's interesting right uh, if someone like if guys like rajan dk are doing family man on one end but also on the other end producing small indie telugu movies like what cinema bandi i think it's called yeah yeah which is yeah. this fabulous movie um, i mean just the idea of an auto wire finding a camera and deciding to make a yeah. movie with the people in this village i mean it's just like beautiful right so yeah yeah i think there is um some some that good writing again <laughs> comes back brilliant. to that it is is genuinely brilliant like um love the show yeah uh what can you put together in an instant i think some sentences <laughs> <laughs> spoken like a writer <laughs> <laughs> like i can quickly like if there's like a brief quickly need to resolve something i can do it off like you know <laughs> that training i have <laughs> I, 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 and to close it off uh and i'm going to use the sentence you you yourself uh, said said why do you think the value of a writer will never die because the value of thoughts are um, you can't put a price to it right so you can get all the ai in the world and um, i mean i just hope i'm not proved wrong with this and sometimes i get a feeling i will be mm. right because the way uh, this gpt2 is developing yeah. it is so scary Yeah. right it can ape writing forms it can create uh, you know writing forms it can create like like and i read it and i'm like man this has got some thought in it it's not mm. just like it's not like siri right like do this do that it's just got such thought in it so i have always valued that thoughts will never go out of fashion mm. uh, and uh, can never be priced and you will always require human skill to do that yeah but the way ai is developing uh, i feel that we are not too far away from that it is was one part of it yeah i think see that's the most i feel that's the most important part of it right like mm. you can because everything else is trained like everything else is algorithm right you want to crack a joke there are 20 formats all right it's identifying patterns it's identifying putting like you know things together like i can see like as an engineer how it can be coded right but like the creation of thought like nobody has the answer to it so uh, i always felt that that can never be coded but like now i just feel that that is also somewhere slowly happening and that kind of scares me but i think till then i think my <laughs> answer would be because thoughts are like you can't value its thoughts are invaluable so i'm hoping that's why writers don't go out of uh, like fashion you know i i I'm, i know when i've had a good podcast episode when there was a clear point i wanted to talk about as a filler which i haven't uh-huh. had to use which is why you and i haven't had to talk about engineering at all which is generally one filler i keep aside if i guess is an engineer i know i have something to fill any gaps i might find in the conversation with we have not touched upon that um, that's a that's a flogged horse if for lack of a more kosher term that i have used many times um, but thanks again for doing this man it, it's been fabulous i've been just like um, i i I'd, i'd hope this would be a free willing chat about writing and the process and just the entire space and uh, it was exactly that and more and uh, thanks ran for coming on advertising is dead thank you so much varun it's like uh, it's a really a pleasure like you know i've always uh, like been following uh, the podcast and uh, i've seen such cool people on it and i used to be like shit like this is like a really cool place to be and then when you are uh, reached out i'm like oh fuck like you know i'm going to be on this podcast now like <laughs> so that was like uh, that is one of my uh, uh, one of the things that i really liked listening to and i'm so uh, like honored to be on it now thank you so much thanks it all